Now let's talk about the standing position and how we're going to notice some patterns in the standing position. Um, often, uh, in this case, I can be the one that creates the pattern as opposed to just noticing the pattern that my training partner creates. Okay, so let's stand up. While for sure there are patterns that I might notice that my training partner might do, in this case, I'm going to exploit my training partner's pattern recognition. Okay. One really easy pattern to create myself, okay, to give my training partner that will almost always uh, give me some sort of feedback is just shoving my training partner like we're in, you know, we're starting to fight in school, okay, you know, or outside of a bar, or whatever. You see people sometimes they're not comfortable throwing punches or whatever, and they just want to kind of push each other. And you know, most of the time they're not really looking, to, they're not really looking to do anything because they probably just crack each other if they were, all right. But as you move forward. Okay, and shove your training partner's shoulders like so, it starts to develop a reaction on the part of your training partner. He doesn't just let you shove his shoulders. If he keeps his hands down by his waist and he just lets you do this, lets you do this, like nobody's going to allow that, you know, over time. Okay, people get irritated with it. And what almost everybody does is they put their hands up when you put your hands up. So you go to shove and he puts his hands up. Okay, he puts his hands up. You don't need to bump my hands or anything like that. Just put your hands up like you're going to clinch with me or whatever the case may be. And he puts hands on me. Maybe he tries to shove me at the same time. And we put hands on each other. It doesn't always have to be a schoolyard shove. Sometimes I can just put hands on my training partner. Uh, or sorry, it doesn't have to start with a school, schoolyard shove. Sometimes I put hands on my training partner in a relaxed way. And then I end with the schoolyard shove. Okay? So it doesn't have to be, boom, right off the bat. Okay? Especially, you know, if you don't want to antagonize your training partner too much. Maybe he's like four times your size or something like that. And you want to get clubbed in the head by him. Okay? You want to try to do this in a way where it's confrontational, but not so confrontational. You're about to start a fight with somebody in the middle of a match. Okay. So sometimes I'm going to grip up and then just shove this guy away. Okay. I'm going to grip up and then just shove this guy away. All right. Now I've created a pattern where every time I approach this guy, he just gets comfortable. We just, we put hands on each other. He puts hands on me. I put hands on him. He might even try to shove me away the next time. Okay. No problem. It doesn't matter. Because the pattern I'm creating here is as I walk forward, we both put our hands up like so. Okay. Now the next time I walk forward, I'll do this like twice. The next time I walk forward, I put my hands up. He puts his hands up instinctually. Now I lower my level and I get into my training partner's legs. And you can use that to set up pretty much any technique. Okay. The double leg just seems the most obvious. So three part series of the schoolyard shove. I either start off like this. Okay. Or we start off with just kind of gripping my training partner. Get a little shove. You can do it with a, uh, a snap as well. You, you clinch up and you just smack this guy's hands down. You know, smack. That's another way to disengage instead of shove. Okay. Now on the third time, all right, I reach up. He reaches up and I shoot. Okay. Similar situation. Okay. Um, I can create almost a shoving reaction on the part of my training partner by lowering my level and moving towards my training partner. Okay. If I bring my shoulders towards him, like I'm going to shoot a lot of times you'll notice your training partner will post on your shoulders or your head. Okay. Exactly. Just pay attention to how he does it. Okay. If he posts both shoulders and that's his most common reaction, you know that when you come forward the next time, you can base his hands up and then shoot into his legs. If he posts on your head as you're doing this, you know that the next time you come forward, you can steal your training partner's wrist and come in for arm drags. If he does some combination of the two, like Chris did the first time, you have a plethora of options. I can bump, I can drag, you know, there's a ton of different things that you can do, but you know your training partner's hands are going to be there. All you got to do is get him to react to the shot. If he doesn't react to the shot, if you come in like this, and your training partner doesn't do anything, next time, tap their leg. Okay? If he still doesn't do anything when you tap the leg, just shoot. Just shoot naked. Okay? Without doing anything. Okay? On the time where you shoot, if you don't get a hold of his legs, it's going to be because he posts. Now he knows you mean business. Okay? This time, okay, so when I finally commit to the shot, he will post, 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 move backwards. Okay? I finally got the reaction. Okay? Some people, you need to sell it a little bit more because they're like, I'm not reacting to that bullshit. Just moving forward like this isn't enough. Just level changing is not enough. I'm not going to post on you. You know, just touching the leg, even that's not enough. I'll let you do that. 
The moment I see your chest come forward as you're grabbing legs, okay, I'll pose. When you do that, just get in the habit of a quick reach. Try to avoid this. <laughs> your training partner will obviously capitalize, okay? So get used to the idea if you're gonna do a full shot and you're gonna drop to your knee, all right? Just reach, elbows come back in. Reach, elbows come back in. This way you're ready to respond in case your training partner tries to snap you down or anything like that. All right, now the next time, he's probably gonna base on the shoulders. Whoop. Pop those arms up and we shoot into our training partner's legs, okay? So we're in the standing position. We create patterns by either pushing or motioning my shoulders forward to get my training partner's hands up. Okay, and you'll notice there's tons of different ways that you can create these patterns uh, on the part of your training partner. These aren't the only ones in the standing position, um, but the purpose of what we're doing here is to try to get you to recognize that these kinds of things are happening. This guy is like, approaching me in a certain way. What can I do based on the way he's approaching me um, that will help me capitalize and get me to good position? It's the lesson I want you to take out of this. You develop a habit of doing that. You have to be paying attention to this. You don't just walk out there you don't just walk out there and just have like a game plan and that's the only thing you're going to execute. Pay attention to what this guy's doing, okay? Or if you feel like he's not giving you anything, find a way to create a pattern like we just talked about. I shove him, I move forward, whatever the case may be. 